Hi, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be reviewing the, the Eufy Cam 2C camera kit along with the Home Base 2. The kit I purchased was the Home Base 2 that came with the two cameras, and then we had two standalone cameras that came in their own little packaging. So we have a total of four cameras on the Home Base 2. I do have one additional camera that will be going onto the garage once we have power and that is the spotlight system that has the camera built in. I ended up going with the Eufy system because I did a lot of research on all the other cameras out there. The Eufy cameras look almost exactly the same as the Arlo's. I do realize there's a few function differences which may just be software related. Uh, the Eufy system also records to the home base. It only has 16 gigabytes internally, but when you're recording a 15 or 30 second clip on each event, uh, you can store several months of events on there. A lot of the other systems require that you have a cloud service, so I wanted to have a system that was not an ongoing monthly fee and was pretty easy to maintain and use through the app. The stated camera battery life that they're saying on the boxes says 180 days, which is six months of usage. I don't know if that's gonna last as long here in the cold. We've been averaging below 30 degrees, uh, definitely at night, and even during the day, it barely gets into the mid 30s. So I think the cold will probably end up hindering the life expectancy on the battery. But once you charge it, it only takes about four or five hours from completely dead. So if you constantly charge them, I guess once every three months or so, you should have to the point where you don't have to uh, ever run out of battery life. Eufy also recently came out with the tiny solar panels. They're about the size of a piece of paper and they plug right into there. So if you end up getting those, you won't have to, in theory, charge them ever. I'll probably end up getting the solar panels for two of the cameras that are in higher locations where they're a little bit uh, not as easy to pull down to charge. The video quality on them is pretty decent. I have the cameras a little bit away from where the entrance is on the house, so to get a good clean picture of a person's face, it's not as clean as I thought it was gonna be, but it's still enough to have general security around the house, which is the primary reason why we have it. The AI in the software is pretty decent to pick up just uh, people. Um, it doesn't pick up animals going around, which is pretty helpful, so you don't constantly have the warnings coming up on your phone every five minutes. I will say when we are away from the house and we have guests in through Airbnb, I do have to filter out the settings so it doesn't constantly let us know every single time someone's going in and out. Setting up the system was pretty simple. Uh, it was a matter of going through the app and it was very intuitive as far as being able to add each camera to the home base. I did have to bring the home base back down. I do have the home base put up top on top of these shelves here. It's able to kind of get the best area of having the Wi-Fi cast out. That is. It does act as a repeater also for the network system, but I have two other repeaters that are inside the house besides the main router. And I did end up going with a mesh system which just gives good Wi-Fi all around the house. The furthest camera that's away is on the shed in the back, which I'll show you a picture of. And that's probably about 80 feet or so from the closest repeater. And the signal there is just as strong as it is inside. So there's no issue with connection or drop connections. Throughout this video, I'll splice in a little bit of footage from the cameras that you can see and also the position and location and the angles that they're able to see outside. Got one of the cameras right up here underneath the deck. The camera itself has a fairly wide view, um, so I'm able to get both doors on the uh, lower level here so I can see if there's any people entering and exiting the building. We do rent it out through Airbnb also, so we're able to see if uh, guests are being true as far as saying how many people come to the house when they say they're a party of two and they show up with 15 or something like that. So uh, anyways, kind of show you the field of view that we're getting here. So we'll get the side door right over here, and then we have our front door right off to the other side there, and it's actually wide enough so we can see both doors very uh, clearly. Uh, it's not close enough where I could really pull uh, images of pictures on faces if we needed it for any sort of like police activity, but um, it kind of gives us a general sense of what's going on around the house when we're not here. So we got this one camera up here in the shed. We're able to get a pretty wide view again. We're able to see clearly into the backyard and then also up onto our deck, which I'll show you in a moment when I go to the camera up top. So with that, we're able to get a real good view of pretty much the entire property, 360 degrees. Got one more camera right over here, uh, right on the edge of the garage, facing straight down the driveway. So again, able to let us to see if there's any kind of snow coming in. So then we can add a range to have the driveway cleared. It also allows us to see too, once we pull out the trash in the morning, see if the truck has already come by. Uh, the camera will typically pick up when the truck comes by, so it'll get a notification on the phone so we can have the trash brought back in. Last but not least, we have our fourth one right up top here. That's able to get the deck up here. Uh, we do have one stairway coming up on the deck. We do have multiple doors up on this deck, but this is the main door coming in. So again, we're able to see if we have a whole bunch of people coming in. Also just to keep track of everything when we're not here. 
This has kind of been just a quick little overview of the system. We've only been using it for a couple weeks. The cameras have been up about two weeks at this point in time. Battery life for the most part has only dropped about 6%, 6 to 7% depending upon the camera and how many times it's recording. The camera on the garage and the front door camera seem to get the most action as far as events that come up, so they're going to be recording a little more frequently than the other cameras that are positioned just more or less to see the back side of the house or things like that. As I use the system a little more and get into it for a couple months and learn how to use the software a little more, I'll do a follow-up video. I'm still trying to figure out a couple functions as far as how to get the spotlights to turn on when it records at night. At this point, it seems like you can just turn them on and off manually through the software. But again, there could be a setting on there I haven't found yet, so I'm still in the process of learning it, how to use it, and how to use all the different features and functions. And me from the future here while I'm editing, just saying that I was able to find the setting. It's actually in the night vision area. You're able to turn on the spotlights while recording at night. Well, thank you for watching this video. If you happen to like review videos in general, please hit subscribe. I do upload them from time to time. If you happen to like this video too, you can always hit the like button down below. It does help out. Thanks for watching and have a great day.